When I open a solid model in EdgeCam, the model faces of this part are concentric, and so EdgeCam guesses that a turning setup may be the first one I want to do on this part. That's handled by EdgeCam's auto alignment preferences, which we'll look at at the end of the video, but it is correct for this setup. EdgeCam knows the part size, and we can quickly make orientation adjustments like flipping the part, where not only is the part flipped, but the work coordinate system origin at the front of the part in this case is retained. Let's put the part back the other way and look at C orientation options. This allows us to pick a feature on the part. When I choose this hole, whatever amount of degrees is necessary, the model is rotated so that that hole is lined up with our X axis, which is our C0 rotation on a turning center with light tooling. If I choose a different feature, that model is rotated to where that feature is at zero. If I choose a flat, for example, again, same thing. So EdgeCam's orientation is super easy on a part like this. Let's look at the next model. With this model, EdgeCam guesses milling, and it sets the environment for a milling setup, and that's not what I want. No problem, we can pick turning. But when I pick turning, the model orientation isn't the way that we want it. And users that have gone through training will probably recognize that the setup window isn't going to give us a quick way to align the part in this case. And so we go into commands like translate and rotate to get the part rotated into a turning position, perhaps. Well, that would work, but a line component is going to be really fast. The command has three stages of orientation. Stage one is to define an axis of rotation. And when we choose a round face on the part, the part is orientated so that the center of that face is coincident with the Z0. Now the part may face the wrong way and so we can click on the face again to reverse the direction. And once that's set, we finish, which means right click or press the check mark. Now, before I do that, I wanna show how edge cam will wait as long as we want at this stage. So if I chose one of the off-center bores, notice that the part is oriented to that off-center bore. If I chose a hole for some weird reason, well, EdgeCam does what I asked it to do, and that is where the center of the spindle rotation is. Let's set it back to the part OD. And with that done, when we finish, we go to the second stage of orientation, which deals with a flat face that we'll use to set our zero position for the z-axis. I'm going to choose the front face of the part. Immediately the part is moved so that z-axis is at this location. Again the prompt stays the same or finish means I can move forward when I'm ready and the final stage is a face to define the z-axis orientation if you wish. I'll choose one hole, the part's rotated so that hole lines up to zero degrees and the part is very quickly oriented the way we want for our turn setup. So the align component command is a very friendly command for parts that are difficult to orient. As we've shown in this case, three quick stages of orientation that are used to quickly lay the solid into the orientation we need for our turning setup. So let's go back to the auto alignment preferences we talked about at the beginning of the video. Under file and preferences on the solids tab, your alignment options. They give permission for EdgeCam in this case to choose between mill and turn, to orient parts for turning, to orient parts for milling, and then guidance about how milling parts might be oriented. This is the secret behind why many parts come in orientated correct. But for users who might build their own manufacturing setups in CAD, such as Hexagon's designer software, you might already have the part oriented the way you want, and you could choose to turn off the auto alignment preferences so that the orientation of the CAD model is retained. So some of you may be wondering, is there a problem with auto alignment? Not at all. Auto alignment is expected to make reasonable guesses and it does a great job in many situations. But due to the nature of this particular part, it didn't make the guess we wanted. And that's not a problem because we can use a line component as well as translate and rotate if needed to get the part quickly into the orientation we need. Then from here, we can continue with the usual stages of building the virtual cam setup very quickly so that we can then move on to feature recognition and ultimately to toolpath. So 
So we'll put stock on the part. Then we can go into our fixture database and choose from there a suitable work holding fixture for this part. I've chosen the chucking system I want to use. We'll configure the jaw gripping position and how much of the part is sticking out from the jaw face. And after doing this, we can then go and create a turning setup where we choose the machine tool that produces edit free NC code, the optional job kit. We'll set the zero system. And off we go, and we're ready to move forward with finishing the CAM process. Do you have questions on this or other topics? Please contact us to discuss. We would love to hear from you. Thank you.